out a new sponsor to Health Blaze. All the information is in the description. Use the promo code above. Good filler one boxing at 18% off of all their natural products from deodorant, pomade, toothpaste, and much, much more. And they have additional discounts on their website as well. That's the healthblaze.com. Start December 20th. That promo code is good for 18% off. We go. All right, breakdown prediction for Canelo Alvarez taking on Danny Jacobs. Um, Danny Jacobs is a five eleven and a half. He's about six foot, um, seventy three inch arm. I mean wingspan according to Box Rec. Thirty five, uh, two losses. One come by knockout. Dmitry Priog. One was a close disputed decision versus Gennady Golovkin. Twenty nine big ones. And uh, Canelo Alvarez is five eight. I think he's shorter than that. He more like five seven, five six. Because Floyd got like an inch or inch and a half, maybe two on him. And he got 70, 70, 70 and a half inch arms. He's 51 and one. Only loss coming, uh, only loss coming into Floyd Mayweather. So, um, so uh, yeah, it is fight week. Don't feel like it. Promotion has been pretty bad, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, don't forget, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to the email. If you ever have a question, business inquiry, sponsorship, or a video request, you just want to chop it up. All that information is in the description. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. And, um, yeah, I didn't have to do film film work on this fight. I chose not to, man. I'm just, um, I'm just not put, I'm just, you know, just, I know, I know the fighters. I've seen them fight a lot of times. I've broke down multiple fights over the last couple of years for both of them. So I'm familiar with what they do, both, both orthodox. So, um, do, do a traditional, traditional way, strengths and weaknesses, strengths. Uh, also Canelo is bringing, uh, the WBC Super WBA belt, and he's bringing uh, those two. Excuse me. Danny has the IBF, and the other belt is held by Demetrius Andrade WBO, and the regular WBA belt is held by Rob Brandt, who'll be fighting Ryota to Ryota Murata in a rematch in Ryota Murata's uh, country in Japan somewhere. So, shout out to them. Uh, but let's talk about it. Uh, strengths for Canelo Alvarez in this fight. Uh, Counter punching is going to be key. Accurate punching for him. Body work is always key versus a taller guy. Uh, really good jab, you know, um, good upper body movement. I made this comparison two years ago, and people, you know, kind of sparked a debate in a boxing group on Facebook. And I said that Canelo remind me of James Tony with his upper body movement, more of a plotter with feet, his upper body movement to be slick and deliver, you know, counter, you know, counter punches to the body. But, um, yeah, you know, Canelo is strong. You know, he's a strong guy as well, too. He got a really good chin so far in the sport of boxing. He has a granite chin. Um, but as far as that, you know, those those are, are the good things that he do. Good left hook upstairs into the body. Um, combination punching, I say it's okay. I say that's a strength, but it's an issue with it, the way he throws combination punches, and I'll get into that later on to the video. Um, but, you know, accurate body puncher, um, good smart thinker. Um, you know, could fight on the back foot, you know, versus a, a, a lesser, a lesser opponent like Golovkin, but he's more of a, you know, he more of a, well, he real rounded fighter, man. Good defender, good upper body movement, can move back a little bit versus, you know, lesser fighters with lesser movement, real crisp shots, accurate puncher, um, good chin. So he does a lot of good things. Talk about Danny Jacobs. Obviously in this fight, strength is going to be, um, if it weren't for the rehydration clause, He'd probably be the bigger, stronger man. Still may have a, a little advantage there. Um, he used to doing it with the IBF now, uh, but power. I think he. I think it's a power advantage for him in this fight. Um, you know, it's an athletic advantage in this fight. He, he's 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 the faster fighter. Um, even foot speed wise, he's the faster fighter. Hand speed wise, um, power. He got the best. He got the bigger power. He's the bigger guy. The longer guy. Um, the more athletic guy and pretty much, you know, that's pretty much it for Danny Jacobs. In my opinion, uh, he don't have the best chin out there. Um, but you know, pretty much that's, that's his advantage. You know, uh, other than, other than that, you know, he got an okay jab and you know, he, you know, I, I, I just think those are his advantages. And those advantages are good enough to win for him. Um, and talk about the weaknesses, weaknesses for Danny Jacobs is, um, mentally it's one of his biggest weaknesses. I don't, I really don't think he can go past, he can just get past that mental hurdle again, knocked out. 
You know, I don't really say when he get hit with something he don't like, he go into safe mode. So he still don't 100 percent believe in his chin, no matter he want to sit there and try to see why, you know, try to justify why people still question his chin. I just think it's a mental hurdle that he'll never get over with for getting smart by Dimitri. Bill. we go back to the Golovkin fight. He fought a little bit scary in that fight too early on. Um, wide punches in this fight. It's going to be something. His looping shots and those clubbing shots that he throw versus a counter puncher like Canelo. Uh, that's Chris and really keep his punches, you know, got his punches technically together. And pretty much, you know, to perfection for Canelo, that's going to be a problem with those looping shots. Um, you know, so those are the weaknesses I see the chin, the mentality, uh, and then just, you know, pretty much the looping shots that he got coming, he got coming in that he need to keep his shots, you know, Chris and pick the shot, pick the times that he looped the shots for, for Danny Jacobs. And then the lack of defense from Danny Jacobs, his, his foot movement is his best defense. He don't really use his natural bend at the waist. I don't see him as a slick fighter as well. And like I said before, that mentality is kind of weak. For Canelo, his rhythmic combination punching, you know what I'm saying? All his combinations come off at the same rhythmic, uh, the same rhythmic, you know, uh, flow. And if you could pick up on that, you know, Danny Jacobs probably come over the top with something nice if he dares to punch with Canelo and uh, catch him. Uh, also for Canelo Alvarez, uh, he won't, he lack of foot movement. He don't have great foot movement. If Danny Jacobs chooses to go out there, and fight like Lara, bounce on bounce on his toes and, you know, lose a little of his foot movement, even though it ain't the greatest. You know, he don't look the greatest, but it's something he can do. He uses height and reach and, and keep Canelo on the outside and bounce around the ring and, and outbox him and, and kind of, you know, you know, pepper with shots instead of load up, you know, load up for power. That could be a problem for Canelo. His foot movement could be a problem depending on what approach Danny Jacobs take. Um, and also he had a height and size disadvantage, so, Nine times out of ten, you know, if, you know, you know, Jacobs, you know, keep him on the outside, it's going to be a problem for Canelo to get on the inside versus uh, Danny Jacobs. But pretty much that's, you know, what I only weakness I really see uh, from Canelo Alvarez, just thinking off the top, uh, you know, but it's a tall test for him. But in general, just looking at the fight, you know, the elephant in the room is that a lot of people believe that Danny Jacobs won't get a fair shake. And I believe that as well, too, and that's why. I think the best fight of the weekend is Hot Rod versus Baturbia because we know it won't be no fishy shit. Um, you've seen with the Jaime Munguia fight that they went back and rescored it versus Dennis Hogan and said they scored it for Jaime, which was, I heard from a lot of people's standpoint, was total uh, hogwash. But, you know, with this fight, Danny Jacobs, what he got to do, you know, in my opinion, you know, you know, fuck that boxing shit. Either to get the knockout or get knocked out. If you know what you're here for, if you're here for a payday, um... All right, do what you want to do. But I'm, I'm Danny Jacobs. I heard, you know, Earl say, oh, he need to box. Look here, man. Reality is, is the reality of it is this, Danny Jacobs. It's the fact that you 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 got to get a knockout to win, okay? If you really come here to win or you come here for a moral victory like you did, you got against Triple G, only you know that. But one thing we know for certain, two things we know for sure, and three things is 100%, you ain't getting no decision. You got to knock this guy out. And how we knock this guy out, Danny Jacobs, is we come behind We come behind a really good jab. Now, that's a couple ways Danny Jacobs can do this. Danny Jacobs can come out, come out, be aggressive, use his jab, and, and, and come out there and close the gap on Canelo Alvarez and press him early. One thing we know about Canelo, which I failed to mention um, in a, a weaknesses, is that he don't have the best stamina. You know what I'm saying? So if Danny Jacobs can come out there and apply smart pressure, and jab, jab, and don't come in reckless, apply smart pressure, and, and, and really, you know, put it on Canelo, and, and keep your range, and, you know, make him miss, and apply a lot of mental and smart pressure, stay on top of him, kind of like Golovkin did, but with, with your ability, you got the speed to really get there, you know what I'm saying, you know, you can do it that way, and just, you know, be on top of him, and then, you know, pick your shots when to load up and hit them. but if I'm Danny Jacobs, man, I'm coming out there off rip, I'm going for broke. I'm pressing Canelo early. I know he a, a counter puncher, but I'm I'm pressing him early, and, and I'm throwing I'm throwing bombs at him. I'm coming out there like I did versus Peter Quillen. Now a lot of people might say, "Oh, that shit's stupid, good fella." But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you ain't gonna win no way. All right, I'm coming out there like I did versus Peter Quillen, and I'm I'm, I'm uh, it's gonna be savagery. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not I'm not coming inside just giving up my height though. 
I'm staying on the outside and I'm throwing bombs off rip, letting them know that this is a real middleweight, really a super middleweight. And I'm throwing bombs and I'm, I'm just cracking them from the outside. I'm throwing hooks. I'm throwing them looping hooks. And I'm throwing, I'm putting, I'm going behind it. Everything will be all pretty much be off the jab for him. Double jab, triple jab, you know, right to the head. And I'm throwing bombs behind him each time. And when he throw, I want to step out of range. Or if he get to throwing them combinations and I'm coming up with the left uppercut, right hand combination over the top, I'm going to make it a savagery war off rip. But that's just the, 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 the game plan I would have. Because I know my situation with Canelo Alvarez and I'm not going to get a fair shake. Now, if guys want more of an educational game plan for Danny Jacobs, what I would do is this. I would mix it up. All right. I would, you know, I would apply that smart pressure. I box a little bit. Then I pick my points in the round where I feel Canelo was trying to take a break. And then I would be throwing, I would be aggressive with him. A double jab, triple jab it up. You know, really pepper and jab, not that club and jab that he throw. I put the overhand right behind it. I put left hooks behind it. I'm really, I'm just really staying on top of the guy. You know, I'm really not worried about the body punching at this point because I got a, Danny really probably got a four or five inch height advantage. So I'm really, I'm really using my jab, keeping him on the outside. And I may even, I may even box a lot of this fight, but I mix the aggression in to, to really hurt him and steal the round. You know, I might box and make Canelo come towards me and box, but then again, I want I want to be offensive when I'm using lateral lateral movement in circles. You can't make the same mistake you made versus Golovkin. You got to be more aggressive. You can't get rounds away. You got to throw a lot of shots. You know what I'm saying? And step out of range when he throw. And also when he get into those combinations, when he feel like he cornered you or you let him get you on the ropes and you kind of play the rope a dope, he start throwing those combinations. Punch with him. Punch with him. You know what I'm saying? If you punch with Canelo and get him while his muscles relaxes, you can get him. You know what I'm saying? But if, if I'm Jacobs, I'm going for broke. Off rip, I'm going for broke. But he can mix in the boxing, lateral movement, and then be aggressive towards at, at the points in the rounds to steal the rounds. But guess what? You're still going to get robbed. You know, I don't blame Jacobs. He come in with a, with a game plan of boxing, using the ring, and then being aggressive and mixing in aggression with his, with his looping shots and his hard shots. But if I'm him, I'm approaching it like the Peter Quillen fight. If I get knocked out, I get knocked out. There ain't nothing that happened before. Because guess what? You don't get no awards for getting no moral, moral victory versus Triple G. It's a loss on the box rate. You know, but at the end of the day, he got to use his height to a certain advantage today. Uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to box and, and use, you know, use his movement, he got to use his height. But for Canelo Alvarez, pretty much. Depends on what Danny Jacobs do. If Danny Jacobs come out aggressive, hot like he did versus Peter Quillen, like I think he should, then it's pretty much punch, punch in between his looping shots. Try to get him with a counter uppercut. Um, but with Danny Jacobs, that's why you smother him. You know what I'm saying? Keep your shots short. Keep him, keep him crisp. But Canelo, he got the shorter, crisper shots. I would be telling Canelo, uh, you know, keep that jab to the body. You know what I'm saying? If I want to, if he want to be the aggressor, if he want to stay on the, uh, or if I need to get on the inside, I need to be using that jab to the head, doubling up, you know, slipping hit, slipping his wide live shots, and then taking the step on the inside and getting my punches off, and getting my combination punches off. You know, it's just a, it just depends on how Danny Jacobs fight the fight. If Danny Jacobs be aggressive, if I'm Canelo, um, I'm, I'm going to the I'm going to the body, I'm hitting that uppercut right up the middle. Um, I'm counting everything he do because everything he do is wide and looping, so I'm keeping my defense tight, and I'm using his energy against him. And I'm just coming up, you know, countering him and using his energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm the better defender. I'm slicker, you know, whatever it may be. Now, if Danny choose to, to use the ring and box, then Canelo going to have to cut the ring off on him, which he got problems doing. So that's really going to have to be, you know, using the jab and, you know, you know, just trying to, you know, get Danny to sit down. And when he punches, sit down, close the distance, slip the shots, work the body, hit the body. And then Danny, Danny uh, energy level drop. And then he's a stationary target, and then you can go to work. But a lot of body work for Canelo. Uh, a lot of body work. A lot of body work for Canelo this fight. No matter, you know, what it what it what the situation might entail. If it's Danny being aggressive, slipping shots, come up there with that left hook to the body, left hook to the head, two shot combination he throw, um, a lot of jabbing. Uh and, and pretty much that's it for Canelo Alvarez. You know, just he just, you know, play off what Danny Jacobs bring. You got the advantage, you're already up six points on the on the card. I mean, for me, for me, this fight just lose cachet because it wasn't promoter right. It wasn't promoter right. 
It loses cachet because I already know Danny Jacobs not gonna get a fair shake. It loses cachet because I know Danny Jacobs don't had a don't have that aggressive mentality where he'd go for the knockout because he'd been traumatized and knocked out before. So, like I said, man, it, it depends on the, what Danny Jacobs want to do. So whatever you want to do, I think Canelo had an answer for it. I honestly think Canelo uh, is the better fighter. He's had the better showings uh, of late, even with the, the last Triple G fight. He had the better fight, the better showings. I mean, from areas, you know, after the Golovkin fight, Danny Jacobs ain't had a good performance yet. All of them been average at best. Arias' performance, he should have stopped him. He looked terrible in it. Slucky, I thought Slucky beat him. He looked terrible in that fight. Dervachenko, he hurt Dervachenko, and then Dervachenko hurt him. Then, you know, he, he went into safe mode. So, uh, Danny Jacobs been looking like the lesser of the fighter, in my opinion. Uh, he been de- regressing ever since he fought Golovkin. His performances, man. And, you know, Canelo, you know, it looked like he got better, you know, after, you know, after losing to Floyd and then after the first Golovkin fight, whether he thought he won or lost, I thought he actually beat Golovkin the second time. Then he fought, what did he fought? Rocky Fielding after that. Or, or, or yeah, Rocky Fielding after that. So, you know, I, I like I like the way he been looking. You know, uh, if he a clean fighter or not a clean fighter, I'm not sure. You know, they, they get these dudes special, special treatments and exemptions all the time. You know, but I really do think Canelo is, is, is probably... The better fighter, he's the hotter fighter coming in. Uh, you talk about the corner. Um, I like Andre Rozier, but um, just seems like his fighters don't listen to him. So Eddie Renasso and Chapo, I think Canelo got the edge in the corner. I think Canelo got the edge with the rehydration clause. Um, I think Canelo got the edge with the network. He got the edge with the promotion. He got the A side promotions. He got three hundred thirty million dollars invested in him. Uh, what does Danny Jacobs got to the, bring to the table, you know, is that he's bigger, he's stronger, and, and he's faster probably. But pretty much that's about it for Danny Jacobs. You know, Jacobs just don't have the mentality to go out there and fight Canelo the way he need to be fought. You know, he don't believe in his chin, and he just don't have the boxing skills in my opinion. You know, everything is looping, and that's why I felt that Jamal Charlo, Jamal Charlo might beat him because Jamal Charlo, like it or not, is more technical than Danny Jacobs. Canelo is more technical than Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs is a wide looping, a wide looping uh, puncher, a club inch puncher. You know, he he just don't really be have a lot of good balance with his footwork. You know, I just I just worry, I just worry about you know, like he like he's just not getting better. And at thirty what thirty something years old, thirty two years old. I just, I just, I just don't, I don't see the progression in him. I see Canelo still getting better, uh, you know, and just Danny Jacobs. I just see the regression over the last two fights, man. I really do, and I, I think this fight is, I think this fight is probably going to, it's gonna be a good fight. Um, you know, I think, I think that uh, Canelo Alvarez is going, uh, you know, he's gonna be ready for whatever Danny brings. He's going to be ready for whatever Danny Jacobs bring. Um, you know, my personal fandom, I, I rarely share my personal beliefs on this channel. And I make sure I share, share them a little bit more. But my personal beliefs is I want Danny Jacobs to win. I hope Danny Jacobs win. Praying for Danny Jacobs to win. Not a fan of Canelo. He's a drug cheat. Don't care what nobody say. So I don't mince words about it. But I believe that Canelo Alvarez is going to win this fight fair and square. I'm going to say Canelo Alvarez is going to win by unanimous decision. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be a clear unanimous decision. I think it's going to be his cleanest victory. I think it's his best victory to date. I think it's going to be his best victory. I think it's going to be an honest to God victory for Canelo Alvarez. Uh, unanimous decision. I'm going to say he win by eight, eight, eight to four. I'm going to say eight to four. Eight rounds to his favorite, four rounds to Danny, four rounds to Danny Jacobs. Yep, it's going to be his biggest fight, biggest victory of his career. So, yep, you know, I got Canelo winning eight to four unanimous decision. Uh, you know, Danny Jacobs move on and do something else. But don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, response, or video request. Appreciate everybody for showing love. Don't forget to share the videos. The best donation you can make is share, share, share. In addition to that, um, you know, don't forget to check out our sponsor, the Hellblaze, the Hellblaze.com.